It's time for Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. Heavy rain and flash flooding threats exist across portions of the Central Plains into the lower Missouri Valley. Heat continues across the southern U.S. from the southern plains, the Gulf Coast, and into the southeast as well as Florida. Below average temperatures exist across the west and portions of the central and eastern U.S. And a continued fire weather threat as well as poor air quality for portions of the Pacific Northwest, the Northern Rockies, and the Great Basin. Closer to home, warm conditions with limited thunderstorm activity continues across the region this week. Daytime temperatures are expected to remain several degrees above normal. Thunderstorm activity increases through tomorrow with scattered storms over the mountains and areas west of the Continental Divide. Conditions become drier later this week and into the weekend as high pressure and reduced moisture limits thunderstorm development to isolated areas of the mountains. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. The Alamogordo City Commission's regular meeting happens tonight at 6.30. Amongst the new business, consider and act upon approving a loan agreement in the amount of $32.5 million with the New Mexico Finance Authority for repairing, replacing, extending, and upgrading water and sewer infrastructure. Consider and act upon approving the location of the City of Alamogordo's F-4 fighter jet. Consider and act upon a resolution encouraging Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham and state legislators to prioritize public safety for the citizens of New Mexico. And consider and discuss providing staff with directions to set up a town hall meeting with Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham and state legislators to discuss crime and mental health. The Mescalero Apache tribe made a situation known that took place at the Mescalero Post Office. There was a powdery white substance found in a package at the post office known as diatomaceous earth. It's a source of silica and an ingredient in toothpaste, cat litter, and paint. It can also be used as a dietary supplement and helps keep crawling insects away. A hazmat team was able to test the substance and confirmed it was a non-hazardous material and the building has now been deemed safe. Spencer Bond set up an online petition calling for the recall and removal of Otero County Sheriff David Black due to the death of Elijah Hadley. I reached out to Bond to obtain details, and my calls were sent to voicemail. He did eventually text me back. Quote, I don't mind being known as a supporter of the Justice for Elijah movement, but I am not a spokesperson. I created the petition because it needed to be done. Close quote. Needing to be done is obviously defined by an incomplete investigation and submitting an online petition via change.org, which is non-binding, meaning it holds no legal weight. So congratulations, Mr. Bond. You've accomplished nothing. Perhaps next time, simply send a strongly worded letter. The Alamogordo Fire Department is currently hiring. This is Lieutenant William Skaggs with Alamogordo Fire Department. Have you ever thought about a career in the fire service? I'm happy to announce that Alamogordo Fire Department is currently accepting applications for the position of firefighter. We offer competitive wages and benefits as well as pay incentives for experience or lateral firefighter transfers. We also take applications with no experience, as for we provide 100% paid on-the-job training for all of our firefighters. For a full job description or to apply, you can go to alamogordofd.com or the City of Alamogordo website. You can visit Human Resources at City Hall or come by the stations if you have any questions. Our command staff and firefighters will be more than happy to answer any questions and walk you through the process. We hope to see you at our next testing. The Republican Party of Otero County's annual ice cream social is taking place this Saturday from 1 until 3 at the White Sands Mall, 3199 North White Sands. You can get there by entering the Big Lots entrance. The Alamo Senior Center presents a dance next Friday, August 23rd from 2 until 5. Refreshments are going to be available and music by Selmo. There is a $5 entry, 575-439-4150 for more information. Today is Tuesday. Let's have an introspection with Pastor Johnny Walker. Hey, this is Pastor Johnny Walker with this week's introspection. Just something to think about. A little sunshine to put in your pockets. My attitude reflects leadership. Today, I want to talk about something that's important as any policy we debate or campaign slogan we shout from the rooftops. It's about our collective attitude, an attitude that is deeply intertwined with the leadership we choose. 
You see, the leadership we put in place should not just promise change. It must embody it. We need leaders who are willing to walk the walk, who show up not just at campaign rallies, town halls, or school board meetings, but in the everyday lives of our constituents. True leadership is about accountability. It's about taking responsibility for the challenges we face and working tirelessly to create solutions rather than pointing fingers or casting blame. It's easy to stand on a stage to talk about the problems, to lament the state of our nation. But let's be clear. Rehearsing the problem only magnifies it. What we need is a bold vision for the future, built on a foundation of trust and collaboration. If we want America to be better, we must lead with a sense of purpose, a purpose that inspires, uplifts, and pushes us all toward a brighter tomorrow. So I say to all leaders, the ball is in your court. Step up, take action, and show us that you are committed to reaching across divides and building a nation worthy of its ideals. Together, let's rise to this occasion. Let's lift each other up, and let's make the promise of America real for everyone. If you want America better, then you need to lead better. This is Johnny Walker with this week's introspection. We hope to see you again next week. If you want to see us sooner, we're at 3001 Thunder Road, Sunday mornings, 1030 for morning worship. You be blessed. News from around the state in just a moment. This is Alan McCorder Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Local news from local perspectives, from local voices. AlmagordoTownNews.org. Local sports, local events, and local happenings and more. Nonprofit owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. AlmagordoTownNews.org. Heard daily on Crazy KALH Radio 95.1. Direct Free Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. With its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side, Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. Tracy DeMori is already awaiting trial and is now facing new charges in Eddy County after investigators said he opened fire on the home of the prosecutor in his case. DeMori has a criminal history dating back to 2002 with convictions for forgery, car theft, and tampering with evidence. In 2022, DeMori was found with a gun and charged with being a felon in possession. He was out on conditions of release awaiting trial when he chose to drive to the prosecutor's home and fired four shots. That was this past February. DeMori has already admitted to the shooting. He states the prosecutor is married to his probation officer, so she shouldn't be handling this case. Naturally, opening fire on their home is the most logical choice. Now he faces new charges for being a felon in possession of a gun, shooting from a motor vehicle, and more. The second trial against Kelly Smith, that's the Carlsbad grandmother charged with the overdose death of her grandson, has begun. Smith was charged with child abuse, resulting in death after police found her grandson, 12-year-old Brent Sullivan, unresponsive in her shed in September 2021. Investigators believe Smith and the boy's mother, Alexis Smith, were selling drugs and that the preteen took some drugs from their stash. Smith's first trial ended in a mistrial after a jury could not be seated. Alexis Smith has already been found guilty of two counts of child abuse and sentenced to 14 years in prison. The Albuquerque Police Department is working with New Mexicans to prevent gun violence for a gun buyback event that's going to be held next Saturday, August 24th from 9 until noon at APD's University substation near Isotopes and the Pit. I spoke with Miranda Viscoli, the co-president of New Mexicans to Prevent Gun Violence. It's just an opportunity for people to get rid of unwanted firearms. So if somebody inherited one or wife has a husband who was a hunter who now has dementia and it's not a safe time to have that gun in the house, there's a host of reasons. Then if they don't want to legally sell it, which they can do, we don't have a problem with that, um, but if they just want to get rid of it, this gives them an opportunity to do that. Participants are going to be paid cash, $250 per assault weapon, 200 for semi-automatic handguns or semi-auto rifles, and $100 for long guns, revolvers, and pistols. The weapons will be dismantled and rendered inoperable on site. 3D printed guns are not eligible. New Mexico ranks amongst the top six states in the nation for repeat maltreatment. And a recent report shows the number rose by nearly 15%. 
Marilyn Beck, the founder and executive director of New Mexico Child First Network, spoke with KOAT. Not only are we not improving, we are worsening in some of these situations. And just last month, and it was brought up again this morning, was that our repeat maltreatment rates for children in the state of New Mexico have worsened. Repeat maltreatment occurs when a child who has been previously abused suffers another case of abuse within 12 months. According to a report by the Legislative Finance Committee, the key factors to stopping repeat maltreatment are prevention and early intervention. Yet, their report shows those two things are not happening soon enough. Beck pointed to a case that happened back in May when a Las Cruces mother was arrested twice in one week for child abuse. What is happening? Why are we arresting someone and then just three days later they're being arrested and committing the same exact crime, which is, that was a violent child abuse criminal charge. The report says that more children are being placed in foster care this year. By April of this year, over 400 additional children were in the foster care system over last year. The Legislative Finance Committee also shows that CYFD is not using all of the resources the state has provided. Of the $59.5 million in non-recurring state funding provided, the agency left over $27 million unspent. The CYFD states that any generalized comment that the CYFD has not shown improvements is without merit. Oh yeah? Prove it. Get those numbers down and stop killing kids. Concerns have been raised that the Democratic Party doesn't have a presence here in Otero County. Those in District 53 don't get a vote as to who's running following the withdrawal of Dr. John Hill, and Democrats in general cannot vote for their presidential nominee. I find it ironic that the party name for democracy is acting, well, so undemocratic. So I spoke with Stephanie Dubois. That's not even the half of it. We're having a state central committee meeting September the 14th at the Albuquerque Convention Center, and I'm going to make my voice very loud. I'm not, uh, you know, if it's a state statute, then, we, you know, it has to be taken up uh, with the legislature. But my deal is, Why did you close down so many counties before a presidential election? Ours isn't the only one. There's a half a dozen. You can hear our conversation in full on our YouTube channel, and it is pretty interesting. The New Mexico Health Care Authority announced yesterday that it had eliminated program fees for child support services. The HCA says the policy change aims to encourage more parents and guardians raising children in separate households to apply to the program through the Child Support Services Division. Applying for child support services is available online, yes.nm.gov. Sports and weather are next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, they just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. La Rosa plays a scrimmage this Thursday in Artesia. Football season openers are taking place next week. Tularosa's first game is on Thursday, and Alamogordo's first game is on Friday. Both of those games are at home. Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for sunny skies with a 30% chance of showers and storms, winds gusting as high as 17 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy with a 30% chance of showers and storms, winds gusting as high as 13. Sunny tomorrow with winds gusting as high as 14. Your high today in the basin, 97. Low tonight of 70. High tomorrow, 95 degrees. In Cloud Croft, partly sunny skies with a 50% chance of showers and storms. New rainfall amounts between a quarter to a half inch expected. Winds gusting as high as 16 miles per hour. Mostly cloudy skies tonight with a 30% chance of showers and storms. New precipitation amounts less than a tenth of an inch expected. Winds gusting as high as 15. Tomorrow, mostly sunny with a 40% chance of showers and storms. Winds gusting up to 15. Your high today in Cloud Croft, 73. Low tonight, 52. High tomorrow, 73 degrees. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.org, and learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting klhradio.org. Also, check out the Crazy KLH Radio YouTube channel. That's where we post our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. That way you too can remain informed of the goings-on in the Tularosa Basin.
That concludes today's edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero.